Kate Sukkel, Dirty Minds, How Our Brains Influence Love, Sex, and Relationships. Embark on a fascinating journey into the depths of our brain with the book Summary of a Dirty Minds, How Our Brains Influence Love, Sex, and Relationships by Kate Sukkel. Throughout this summary, you will discover the pivotal role of hormones like dopamine and oxytocin in the multifaceted world of love, sex, and attraction. Explore the areas in our brain responsible for developing and sustaining strong connections and dive into the mysteries behind the love-hate relationship. The summary delves deep into the intriguing world of neurobiology, examining how various primal instincts, genetic variations, and neural pathways shape our relationships and behavior. Unraveling Love's Mysteries The quest to understand the role of human organs in guiding love and desire has taken many turns throughout history, from Aristotle's belief in the heart as the center of intelligence and passion, to the flawed theory of phrenology in the 19th century. Modern advancements in technology have paved the way for the development of functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, allowing researchers to observe brain activity related to emotions and stimuli. Today, we can begin to apply this deeper understanding of the brain to unravel the mysteries of love and desire. Centuries ago, people were mystified by the inner workings of the human body and its connection to love and desire. In ancient Greece, Aristotle believed the heart was responsible for both intelligence and passion, with the brain simply serving to cool overheated emotions. However, as time went by, scientists began to explore the brain's role in these experiences. In the 19th century, scientists Franz Joseph Gall and Johann Gaspar Spurzheim formulated the basis for phrenology, a discipline that studied skull shape to determine a person's character and mental capacities. Proponents of phrenology thought they could detect a person's capacity for love by examining the contours of their skull. The idea, intriguing as it may have seemed, was ultimately disproven and discarded. By the 20th century, technological advancements began to transform the study of the brain. No longer confined to examining skulls, researchers could now use cutting-edge processes like computerized axial tomography CAT, and positron emission tomography PET, scans to analyze brain function. These developments paved the way for a groundbreaking leap in neuroscience, the advent of functional magnetic resonance imaging fMRI. The introduction of fMRI in the 1990s revolutionized researchers' ability to study the brain in detail by observing blood flow within its regions. Thanks to this innovation, scientists can now pinpoint which areas become more active in response to specific stimuli, including the sensation of love. With a richer understanding of the brain, we are now prepared to explore the complexities of love and desire, shedding light on the enigmatic forces that govern our relationships and emotions. Dopamine's Love Influence Inside our brains lies the basal ganglia, a group of structures responsible for producing dopamine, a vital neurotransmitter for human behavior. Dopamine provides the foundation for neurological functions and behaviors, connecting to various diseases like Parkinson's, schizophrenia, and OCD. It is also a major player in romantic love, dictating how we behave when falling for someone. For instance, dopamine makes us assign fortuitous meanings to insignificant coincidences in relationships. Another component of the basal ganglia, the mesocortical limbic system, also impacts our love experiences. This dopamine-rich pathway processes rewards and teaches us how to elicit pleasurable experiences, such as anticipating a delightful kiss. Unraveling the Mating Mystery the animal kingdom showcases a diverse array of mating behaviors driven by sexual reflexes and hormones. For instance, female rats exhibit an instinctual pose during fertility, while baboon females display physical signals of readiness for mating. However, human mating behavior differs, as we don't experience such reflexes. Instead, sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone increase our chances of engaging in sexual behavior. Ovulating women, for example, tend to dress more revealingly and show increased interest in men, possibly due to the influence of sex hormones on the brain. 
Despite researchers discovering numerous hormone receptors in the human brain, the precise nature of how these hormones impact neurological structures remains a mystery. Unraveling the Attraction Mystery Attraction is a complex and diverse phenomenon, with no single factor responsible for driving human desire. People might cite distinct preferences, but there's no universal explanation for what makes someone attractive. Even neurobiology, despite extensive research, remains unable to pinpoint a definite answer. For instance, a study conducted by Zhou and Chen from Rice University revealed that women exposed to the smell of sweat from sexually aroused men displayed neurological reactions in brain regions related to socio-emotional and sexual behavior. However, the neutral sweat of men evoked no response. While such findings show the brain's engagement with chemosensory cues, they don't establish that these cues hold significant sway in determining attraction. To date, there hasn't been any single chemical identified as a reliable factor in attracting a partner. Hormones and Lifelong Love Prairie voles, small rodents, exhibit a fascinating behavior, they form lifelong monogamous bonds with their mates, attributed to their brain's oxytocin and vasopressin receptors. Following their first sexual encounter, these voles create a bond with their partner and solely mate with them. The high concentration of oxytocin receptors in their brains plays a key role in this bonding process, as oxytocin results in a dopamine rush, causing the prairie voles to associate the pleasures of mating with their first mate. Like humans, their brains have a built-in reward processing system that reinforces this bonding through chemical reactions. Human love, while not fully understood, is also believed to involve oxytocin. Research by Yale's Ilanit Gordon found that couples with close connections have oxytocin present, but it remains uncertain whether their behavior causes increased oxytocin levels or if oxytocin itself influences their behavior. Fidelity, more than genetics. When it comes to enduring love and monogamy, prairie voles are famously committed. Research from the Yerkes National Primate Research Center found that manipulating the vasopressin receptors in male voles led to promiscuity, indicating that these receptors play a vital role in their monogamous behavior. For humans, however, genetic factors are more complex. A 2008 study from the Karolinska Institute in Sweden found that individuals with a variation of the AVPR1A gene, which controls vasopressin, were more likely to be unhappy in relationships, but not necessarily unfaithful. Another study in 2010 by evolutionary biologist Justin Garcia found a variation in the dopamine receptor gene that correlates with riskier behaviors and a higher number of romantic partners. Although these genetic variations influence our tendencies, they do not dictate our actions or guarantee infidelity. It is essential to remember that numerous other factors, including undiscovered chemicals and pathways, may play a significant role in determining our fidelity in relationships. With this knowledge, we can better appreciate the intricacies of human bonding and behavior within romantic partnerships. Love, Hate, and Oxytocin Contrary to popular belief, love and hate share significant brain chemistry and regional connections, making them less dichotomous emotions than one might think. The hormone oxytocin, strongly associated with love, has also been found to play a role in aggression, blurring the line between these seemingly opposite emotions. Moreover, studies have revealed overlapping brain regions responsible for both love and hate, further showcasing the complex interplay between these powerful feelings. Challenging the idea that love and hate are entirely separate emotions, research has shown that oxytocin, a hormone often associated with love, also influences aggression. In a 2010 study by Karsten de Dreux, participants who inhaled oxytocin were more generous towards their own group, indicating a heightened sense of love for those they identify with. However, the same subjects were also more likely to display aggression when protecting their group from perceived threats. This evokes a complicated relationship between love and hate, with oxytocin seemingly contributing to both emotions. This complexity extends to the structure of our brains as well. Other research has discovered considerable overlap in brain regions responsible for love and hate. 
One such study conducted in 2008 by Samir Ziki and John Paul Romaya involved participants viewing pictures of individuals they hated, loved, or felt neutral about while undergoing brain scans. Surprisingly, the scans revealed that areas of the brain associated with love and hate were significantly overlapped. In conclusion, love and hate are not as dichotomous as they may seem. By examining the role of oxytocin and the interconnectedness of brain regions, we can appreciate the intricate tapestry behind these powerful emotions. This deeper understanding provides a fresh perspective on the complexity of our emotional lives and the biological underpinnings of our most intense feelings. In conclusion, Dirty Minds unravels the complex neurobiological underpinnings of love, sex, and relationships, offering captivating insights into our brain's profound influence in these areas. As you have seen throughout this stimulating summary, the intricate interplay of hormones, genetic variations, and brain regions has a lasting impact on our behavior in relationships and our understanding of attraction. While definitive explanations may still elude us, these findings encourage open-mindedness and curiosity as we continue the search for answers. As we unravel the tapestry of these complex and essential human experiences, a deeper understanding of ourselves and our relationships emerges, enriching our lives and strengthening our connections.